coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll see how soy is powering a major city's public transportation and how it could meet a major boost for soybean growers. We'll take you to one of the largest hay auctions in Minnesota. And the South Dakota State Fair celebrates the state's biggest industry, agriculture. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Soybeans could play a big role in powering public transportation, and that's good news for soybean growers. The North Dakota Soybean Council's See for Yourself program recently took a group of North Dakota farmers to the West Coast to get a closer look at ag in that part of the country, but also to see how North Dakota crops are used, transported, and shipped in that region. Ag Week went along for a look at how biodiesel from soy is used to power an entire city's transportation system. Portland, Oregon's TriMet transportation system has been using biodiesel since 2006 across its fleet. They operate 660 city buses, 145 light rail vehicles, and five diesel locomotives. A recent change from cooking oil biodiesel made from restaurant grease the straight soy and canola oil has yielded better results across the fleet and better prices. Right now, biodiesel has actually been a bonus in terms of price with the tax credit being reinstated. We're paying $1.50 a gallon to blend it in with $1.60 a gallon ultra low sulfur diesel. So our price has been pretty good lately. Jana Gastelum with the Oregon Environmental Council says even though Portland has had a good green reputation, they still have air quality issues like any other city. And Oregon's state policies regulate biofuel blending requirements and clean fuels programs. We really appreciate the folks who are looking at, okay, you have something like a soybean and there's so many end uses and products and one of those can be a cleaner fuel. And so it's been really interesting and neat to be able to, to partner along the way and think about what is that whole supply chain of fuel and technology? We want to use our own product. Uh, you know, our, we, we raise these crops and utilize uh, the oil from the soybean crop to enhance the price of the soybeans and stuff. Plus, it's a benefit for the engines. We feel it helps to make them last longer. So we actually have it figured out so far that our engines are tired, really tired, between 350 and 400,000 miles. At that point, we pull them out, we buy reconned engines from Cummins, and we just slide a brand new one in rebuilt one. That's what's happening to this bus right here. We don't see biodiesel front and center in our state, but our soybeans play a really big role in the use and production of biodiesel on the coast, but largely the west coast, where states have mandates uh, about renewable fuels, and they are struggling and working really hard to meet those mandates. And the soybean producers in North Dakota that grow and ship those soybeans are a key part of making that happen. As biodiesel technology has evolved, the engines have also been developed to burn much cleaner. Basically, the only thing that comes out is nitrogen and water. That's all we have come out of the exhaust pipe. They tell you you can go up there and breathe what comes right out of that pipe. I never imagined that they'd have 650 city buses running around. On a big scale, the amount of gallons that they use is incredible. You know, and nobody would have envisioned that how many years ago that that's what soybeans would be used for. And oh, you, we try to get uh, biodiesel as, as much as we can throughout the season. Freeman Martinson has been using a 2 to 5 percent blend of biodiesel on his farm near Winemere, North Dakota, for the last 15 years. He says a trip like this to educate younger farmers who might not know much about biodiesel is beneficial and allows them to see how it's used on a large scale. I've talked to a couple of younger guys, they, they, they don't really know what it is even yet. I was surprised to hear that. It's just an educational format that we have to bring to them here to, to educate them here, I think. A lot of farmers don't use it or don't know the, the benefits of it, and I think it's something as a, you know, as a soybean council and as a state, we really need to try and push and, uh, and to incorporate into everybody's farm. I mean, it's good for everybody that, that produces soybeans. This year's trip was the fourth year the North Dakota Soybean Council put on the See for Yourself program. The program is paid for from the soybean checkoff. The United Nations has declared 2016 the International Year of Pulses. As farmers search for ways to increase their bottom line, 
pulse crups are getting more attention. And as consumers discover their nutritional value, prices have held up fairly well. Jonathan Knutson traveled to Montana to visit with a farmer who's turning more and more to pulses. Like many Montana farmers, Jerry Schillinger traditionally relied primarily on wheat. Also like many Montana farmers, he's increasingly turning to pulse crops. Pulse crop is a pea, a lentil, a chickpea, uh, a legume. Increasingly popular with farmers in western North Dakota and especially Montana here in the eastern part of the state. Why is that? Profitability. They're a crop that, uh, especially right now, um, is profitable to raise on your farm. Secondly, agronomically, they make our wheat crops better, healthier, uh, more affordable. And uh, thirdly, they're, they're great for the soil. Pulse crops are very affordable protein, high protein for a low price. And in some of the countries, it's also a religious thing. They don't eat meats. On his trip to Montana, Jonathan made a crop stop in North Dakota's oil patch to check on the coexistence of energy and ag. The slump in North Dakota's oil patch hurts the state's economy, but there are benefits for farmers and ranchers. It's been nice to slow down and get back a little bit more to normal, but at the same time we we wish we could have our commodity prices back and four dollar diesel fuel really was hard to take but at the same time it, I'd probably pay it again if commodity prices would go up. Farmers and ranchers agree on this. The world will always need food and it will always need energy. The more we can get along you know the better off we'll be. We, everybody uses energy and agriculture uh, thrives on energy as well as obviously we know the people that produce energy need to eat. So everything goes hand in hand, and, and as long as we can get along fine, we'll continue to be able to harvest both crops and uh, oil. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Up next on Ag Week TV, the rapid rise of microbreweries in the region means a new opportunity for area growers to make money if they choose to hop on. My name is Joel Kaler owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Bigger than hockey in the state of hockey. It's the Minnesota State High School Clay Target League, and it's the fastest growing high school sport in Minnesota. Watch as we follow along with some of the best shooters in the state. You might be surprised at who we find. Then we travel to Clear Lake, Wisconsin, where we see the bond between man and his hunting dog grow stronger in the off season. That's this week on Northland Outdoors. Protect the part of you that works the hardest, your hands, with durable gloves from Home of Economy. Our great wall of gloves has work gloves with protective features like safety cuffs and high visibility fabrics, chore and mechanics gloves, leather as well as lined waterproof rubber gloves, and Raven single-use nitrile and latex gloves. We always have the right gloves for the job at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. 
Business is booming for a group of North Dakota farmers, and they say demand for their crop is higher than their yield. Mike Osley, a farmer and research agronomist, is harvesting hops near Carrington. Hops are a major ingredient in beer. He says the growing microbrewery industry in North Dakota is behind the increased demand. This is Osley's second year harvesting hops, and he thinks others should consider growing hops too. They are fairly intensive, and uh, you know it's going to. It has. They're they're kind of a high input uh, crop, but uh, if uh, if enough people uh, can grow them, I think that there's a lot of potential for our state. Osley says it will take about four years for his hops plants to mature. It's the biggest company of its kind in the Midwest, maybe the country. Mid America Auction Company holds hay sales near Sauk Center, Minnesota, attracting sellers and buyers from around the region. As Mikkel Pates found, variety and fast pace are a winning combo for these auctions. The Mid American Auction Company's hay sale at Sauk Center, Minnesota, is one of the largest in the region and brings up to 200 loads per sale. Somebody give 75 on her. 75 with them on 30, 40, 65. Yep. There's uh, straw here. There's uh, really top quality hay. There's what I call young stock and beef cow hay. So uh, that's why with the testing comes in very important to, to know because certain farmers want uh, a real good testing hay for their dairy herds. The next guy might come in, he might only want some heifer hay or beef cow hay. They can look at it and uh, go that way. 50, I get 40, need 50. Auctions are held here twice a month, September through May, and once a month in the summer when demand is lower. The summer auctions began a few years ago during a drought, but even in a good crop year, the auctions are popular. In the heavy season, we'll oftentimes have 200 to 220 loads of hay, uh, and those loads will often contain from 20 to 25 tons. So if you do the math, it's a considerable amount of hay that uh, is, uh, is transferred uh, ownership in one day. So we do, a, we do have a nice volume here, uh, you know, starting basically in November. November through April are heavy months. Testing is an important part of their auctions because buyers are looking for different things. For example, dairy producers want higher protein feed and will pay more for it. All the samples are sent to the Stearns County Dairy Herd Improvement Association lab the morning of the sale. The people will bid on the sample based on what the moisture is, the protein is, and the feed value is. So the better that sample, sometimes the higher the price. The fast pace yep. and central location of the auctions appeals to both buyers and sellers. They set the tone right from the beginning of the sale. There's no messing around. It's a, it's a minute or two to a load and they move on. We can get here and get back home and we don't have all the extra trucking, you know. That's pretty reasonable for us. So. And it's all tested hay quality. You buy what you want and go on your merry way. This sale is an important link between forage producers in several states around and the Livestock Center in this part of Minnesota. For Ag Week TV, this is Mikkel Pates. Mid-America also does 75 to 100 farm equipment and on-site livestock auctions a year in a 200-mile radius. It's turning cooler. Your harvest outlet for the week is next. And later, as the potato harvest nears, we talk spuds at the annual potato field day in the Northern Valley. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Micro Essentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Micro Essentials, get more from every acre. Sky. 
the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice, the best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Ag Week TV Weather is brought to you by Kaler Farms. Weather portion of Ag Week, now the transitional season continues. As we look through the middle part of September, cooler weather is settling into the plains and Midwest, much of the central United States. Here over the next couple of weeks, we'll have enjoy much cooler weather after a fairly hot beginning of the month of September. Rain and harvest time and mud concerns because there have also been some areas, especially parts of North Dakota, Minnesota, and some parts of Iowa that have really had some very heavy rains these last couple of weeks. And there is a heat wave ongoing in Europe. I won't dwell too much on that, but it is worthy of pointing out that to many parts of Central Europe in particular, around Germany and spots have been experiencing temperatures in the 90s. As we have cooled down, they have heated up once again. I wanted to focus just a bit on total rainfall across North Dakota and Western Minnesota. I'm not dis, uh, not focusing on this area for any reason other than this is data from the North Dakota Ag Weather Network site known as Indon. But I wanted you to realize that from May 15th to now, how wet it has been in the greater Grand Forks area with a, a large pocket of up around 20 to 25 inches of rain just since the middle part of May. You think it's been wet? Yeah, it's been wet all the way up into northeast North Dakota and then a narrow little tail that extends down through oh, about Jamestown and on down into uh, south central North Dakota. It's rained more than twice as much in the Grand Forks area as it has in the greater Fargo area. And it's not like it's been super dry in the Fargo area. Western North Dakota, definitely a little bit drier. That's fairly typical, of course. It just doesn't rain as much in Western North Dakota out there in the High Plains. But the drought monitor is telling us there really are no uh, longer any seriously dry areas in North Dakota or Minnesota. Parts of central Western South Dakota, a little dry. Sioux Falls area, a little dry. Parts of the Eastern Corn Belt are a little dry, but not enough for any real dramatic effect on corn bean prices. Grain prices is not such a uh, problem at all. Uh, we do have some cooler weather dumping into the northern plains this week, courtesy of a jet stream pattern. We also have a subtropical jet stream that is bringing a lot of moisture up into the Middle West. Going to bring some rains to California and parts of the Midwest will continue to be wet. Meanwhile, the polar jet stream will bring cooler temperatures the next two weeks to much of the plains and Midwest. In terms of moisture, it will be dry this next week over much of the northern plains and the west coast. The wet weather, wetter than average weather in California with a narrow tongue up into the central states and probably some tropical moisture again in the Carolinas. And uh, the second week as we look at it, it's still going to be relatively dry, I believe. Northern Plains, Northern Rockies, the wet area will be down in the Central Plains. And that may get up into Iowa as that tropical moisture feed is expected to continue. So cooler weather, Northern Plains, not so rainy weather for a while, except in the Central Plains, Iowa South, still looking fairly wet. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice, the best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. Bigger than hockey in the state of hockey. It's the Minnesota State High School Clay Target League, and it's the fastest growing high school sport in Minnesota. 
Watch as we follow along with some of the best shooters in the state. You might be surprised at who we find. Then we travel to Clear Lake, Wisconsin, where we see the bond between man and his hunting dog grow stronger in the off season. That's this week on Northland Outdoors. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. In ranking potato producing states, North Dakota is fourth and Minnesota sixth. Markets for the potatoes grown in this region include everything from French fries and chips to seed and fresh. So there's always something interesting to talk about at the annual potato field day. Jonathan Knutson was there and has more. The annual potato field day is a tradition. Potato growers and others come from across the region to learn more about their industry. Markets are uh, always uh, volatile, but um, yeah, I think uh, potato is it's an important part of uh, American agriculture. But a very wet summer in parts of northeastern North Dakota, where potatoes are common, could mean big losses. I've talked to producers who have had 24 inches. I have talked to producers that have had more than that. And we have a lot of low spots that are drowned out and gone. It's probably going to make harvest very difficult because it's still wet out there. Uh, we're hoping for the best, but uh, it's a very, very difficult situation in northeastern North Dakota. Storage will be a bit of a battle this year. It's going to be really important when we're harvesting potatoes to handle them very gently because any kind of bruises, cuts, scrapes, wounds are going to be entry points for diseases. And with the excessive water, bacterial diseases are, are going to be pretty common, likely. Farmers say that raising potatoes can be challenging. They also say it's satisfying. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knutson. Gunnarsson says in the rest of the potato growing regions, the crop is looking good. Coming up on Ag Week TV, they're milking it for all it's worth. The South Dakota State Fair celebrates the state's biggest industry. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. It's time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. 
trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Bigger than hockey in the state of hockey. It's the Minnesota State High School Clay Target League, and it's the fastest growing high school sport in Minnesota. Watch as we follow along with some of the best shooters in the state. You might be surprised at who we find. Then we travel to Clear Lake, Wisconsin, where we see the bond between man and his hunting dog grow stronger in the off season. That's this week on Northland Outdoors. The South Dakota State Fair finished its five-day run over Labor Day weekend. And for the second straight year, it saw record crowds. As Michelle Rook reports, the fair boasts a unique emphasis on the state's number one industry. I'm here at the South Dakota State Fair in Huron, which is still one of the few agriculturally focused fairs in the country. The five-day event kicked off with value-added Agriculture Day, featuring products ranging from honey to wine and even moonshine. You know, we are such a heavy a com ag commodity state in South Dakota, and we ship so many of our commodities out. But there is also an awful lot of processing here as well. The State Fair also showcased the project work of 4-H members, from static exhibits to canning and baked goods and some of the best livestock shows around. To recognize the youth and all the things they've been working on this last year, whether it be showmanship things with livestock or different uh, uh, crafts and other uh, static events and things, and it's just really it's built around our youth. 4-H entries were up again this year and on display at the $4.7 million Nord B 4-H exhibit hall, which was dedicated during the fair. Midwest Dairy Association served up dairy products and highlighted the state's multi-million dollar cheese processing industry. We have a, a first time ever uh, we're promoting the dairy industry through an event ca uh, called the Cheese Sculpturing. And I've uh, got a, a guest artist who's uh, doing a, a bust of a cow. And the state's pork producers were also promoting their product, serving various entrees, including pork tenderloin on a stick, pulled pork, and pork loin. We average about uh, 4,500 pounds of, of loin that's grilled on our, on our cookers out back. And uh, that's all sliced up into our sandwiches and we'll probably go through a couple thousand sandwiches a day. So without a doubt, the South Dakota State Fair was truly a celebration of the state's number one industry. In here in South Dakota, I'm a Rook reporting for Ag Week. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.